Bardaw's AMAC is a Red Raider. The Texas Tech Red Raiders capitalize on an opportunity, likely with NIL money, to grab the highly sought after Utah Valley product, Fardaz AMAC. So a lost recruitment for Fran McCaffrey. What does it mean moving forward? Who does Iowa turn to at the center position? And does Josh Ogundale's decision to come back affect their decision making? More on that in a moment. But a reminder first, please subscribe to the channel here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Please also like this video, hit the thumbs up for this video, and please reach out to our sponsor, Josue Alvarez at Dewey Ford in Ankeny for all of your new and used car purchasing needs. If you buy a car through Josue and you mention that from the Hawkeye of the Storm sent you, you will get a $100 Casey's gas card courtesy of Josue Alvarez and from the Hawkeye of the Storm. So appreciate Josue sponsoring the video. But yes, the news that broke this weekend, Fardaz AMAC committing to Texas Tech, reports started to surface um, about a day prior to that official announcement that Fardaz had eliminated Iowa from his uh, final list. And not a real surprise. I mean, it, 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 there was a point in this recruitment. I'll admit there was a point in this recruitment where I felt pretty good about Iowa's chances. But let's be honest, Texas Tech is recruiting at a different level right now. And listen, I'm not saying any shadiness is going on there, but I think NIL, I think we have to just accept that as of right now, until the NCAA, somebody comes in and can regulate some things as opposed to just letting it be a free-for-all, which it is. And basically, we have exactly what was happening in the black market out in the open. So it just encourages it even more now. Um, it's just ridiculous. But that's that's the state of college basketball right now. And until that gets regulated, teams like Iowa are going to struggle. Iowa needs a collective. That's a discussion for a different video. Um, it is going to be a challenge to recruit against NIL money. And there's a lot of NIL money in those Southern schools, not just the SEC, but we see it likely with Texas Tech uh, and even Miami. We heard Nigel Pack's recruitment there and the supposed deal that he got for going to play for the Hurricanes. So it's out there, not saying that Fardaz's decision is completely NIL based, but wouldn't be surprised if it's a big part of this. And let's be honest, right now, Iowa's in a situation where you get Josh Agundale back you feel a little bit better with depth there, but I don't think any Iowa fan is going to say they're comfortable with Josh Gundale, who hasn't shown significant signs of improvement. I'm not saying he hasn't improved offensively. I do think we saw glimmers of hope there in, the, in really those two games against Purdue last season. Also, Riley Mulvey is going to be a year older, right? A year uh, where last year he was supposed to be in high school, right? He reclassified, bumped up a year, and was here a year early. So maybe he really develops, but I don't think you want to put uh, that five position on those two guys' backs. And so you're probably looking at Philip Rebracha again to play the five, and that's probably not <laughs> what you want. He did it admirably this year. I thought he battled through a lot of size, a lot of foul trouble, but I'd, I'd love to see Philip get some time at the four this year and then be able to spell whoever the starter is at the five. I still don't think you're going to see Riley Mulvey enter the portal. He has been very, very strong in his stance that he enjoys it here. But if you get another five, it is going to kind of backlog things for Agundale and Mulvey. So it'll be interesting. But Fran is in the portal right now. It does look like Fran would prefer to get a guy who's going to be here a year, maybe two. This is not a situation where they're looking for a center of the future. They've got their two young guys, Agundale being a third-year guy next year. Mulvey, of course, again, we know he should be a, fre a true freshman this year had he not reclassified. And then they get Owen Freeman in 2023, 6'10", 6'11", kid who's very skilled offensively. So... They're looking for a guy in the portal who can service those needs. Who's out there? Well, I'll give you a few names to watch. Watch for in the coming days, coming weeks. Number one being Trey Mitchell from Texas. Reports started to surface here this past week um, that he was hearing from Iowa, but he was also hearing from a lot of schools. Former UMass standout, very skilled offensively, big rebounder. He'd probably be the highest touted kid of this group that I'm about to give you, but certainly Trey Mitchell has been on Iowa's radar. Next kid that we heard about is Theo Akuba. Theo uh, actually has played for a couple schools as well. Started out at Portland, transferred to Louisiana Lafayette. He's about 6'11", very athletic, not real polished offensively. Watch him play in the post. His footwork is going to have to get a lot better, but he'd be coming to Iowa to be a real rim protector. So that would be good news for Iowa. I don't think they need a ton of scoring from that position, but they can get a guy who can protect the rim. That would be huge. I know Theo Okuba did just visit Iowa this past weekend. Uh, he also visited Ole Miss, according to 247 Sports. 
So it sounds like we're going to be hearing where he's headed coming days, coming weeks. We'll have to wait and see. Third guy to watch, Osun Osuniyi, uh, kid from St. Bonaventure, another 6'10", 6'11", shot blocker, very skilled, very long. This might be a tough one. A laundry list of schools reported as early contacts for Osuniyi. He really fits the need that Iowa has. Let's remember, Fardaz Amac going to Texas Tech instead of Iowa, that hurts. But Iowa really needs shot blocking and they need rebounding. And although Fardaz was dominant on the boards, Fardaz offensively was still is still a work in progress. If he wasn't, he'd be jumping to the NBA, and I don't think he's going to. I know he's still got his name in the draft. So any of those three guys, Trey Mitchell, Osuna Sunayi, uh, and then certainly Theo Okuba, any one of those three guys, they're going to give you a defensive presence inside, a rim-protecting presence, and length. Something Iowa didn't have at that position this year is length with Philip Herbracha starting at the five. So certainly Fran is active. You wonder at what point did Fran start to really pick up activity because we know for a while it was quiet. The only guy we knew about that Iowa was actively pursuing at that position would have been Fardaz Amak. So at some point it seems like either Iowa pulled back for some reason or they just realized that uh, it was a a race, uh, a three-team race between Washington, Texas Tech, and Texas. So um, again, good news that Iowa is reaching out to several players in the portal. I did see today that Ryan Young committed to Duke, the kid from Northwestern, who I thought Iowa might get involved with. So I would not be surprised if NIL was a factor there. It's incredible how things have turned so quickly because of name, image, and likeness. And everybody thought it was going to be this awesome paradisaic scenario for student athletes. And I guess kind of it is. But let me tell you something. These top players who are leaving, they're leaving behind players who aren't entitled to these funds, who are not going to be able to get these big NIL deals and their teams are going to suffer. So it's not all green grass, sunny skies, and gummy bears. This is a very, very difficult position for a lot of these players who are not able to attain the big-time contract. So we'll just have to wait and see. But again, those are the three names to watch. Akuba, uh, Trey Mitchell, and certainly Osuni. Maybe there'll be another guy that gets involved. Maybe we'll hear sooner rather than later which one is heading to Iowa City. And they will get somebody, folks. They're going to get somebody. Fran will get somebody at that five position. They are clearly not settling for Mulvey, Ogundale, and Rebracha. Appreciate you joining me for another edition of the show. A reminder that in the coming days, my next edition of Brada's Branded Thoughts, a bi-weekly podcast during the offseason, will be released. Stay tuned right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm.